just to finish off here and just to finish off this eye area for this example, I'm going to go back to the other version that I built earlier. But I just wanted to show you the sculpt workflow because it was really important to get an idea of how ZBrush works. Is that we can come in now and then I just want to sort of mask that area here and then come in to the perspective window, which is going up, moving out, Alt G. We know roughly that's where our eyes are. Okay, so I can just invert that. And now with the four key, which is clay build up, I'm just going to hold down control. Now control is just eating in, so it's the same thing, but it's just inverted. So we're inverting that brush just to eat it in a bit. I'm not going to use so much masking. I just wanted that basically as a, a test case. Now that we're here, we can sort of just start to sculpt up this area to get, and you can be really quite rough with this. So back there, just have a look at the, the face. Ah, oh, that's because I got perspective on. Start to round that out and find the shape. Come back out, get rid of that background. So I like toggling that on, that Alt G is a great little one to have. Now, the other thing about H polish, which I was showing you before, which is this guy here, is that it's also really great at getting rid of lumps and bumps and things like that. So instead of just using it purely as a flatten, you can also use it, especially when you're in these high polygon counts and you're doing something like down here, sort of like that, and you're smoothing it out and it's not particularly, it's getting all lumpy. This is something that I struggle with a lot when I first started is it's like, where's the smooth accelerator? I just don't want to be here forever, especially in Dynamesh because you can't go down lower levels, which we will be doing later. H polish is great because you can do stuff like that. So it is actually flattening, but it sort of does it in a way which can even out the surfaces if you just sort of brush around it. So this is just lightly tapping with the Wacom and then sort of coloring that in with the smooth. So it's a combination of a little bit of sculpting and, and a lot of smooth that can enable you to get back to a bit of a smoother form and it can help right up here too. So you can just cut into these areas. See that one there? So I'm just undoing that, doing it a little bit more. The S key, getting your brush size is really key. It's a bit annoying because it's not B. And then we're here with the four clay build up and just eating into that a little bit too, using a bit of a smaller brush. So as you can see, I can make this look quite easy because I've done a lot of sculpting. And I would build a shape like that up in a, in a matter of minutes. It's not really going to take a long amount of time. But the last thing I want to show you guys is, okay, this is okay. It's a bit lumpy around here, especially because I'm such a purist when it comes to lumps and bumps and things like that. But there is one magical step that's left to complete this little part of the demo. And that is the Zed Remesher. Now I do have Zed Remesher sort of hiding here. So if you just close one of those, you can see it there. The other place it is is just there, Zed Remesher. Now with busts, I usually will leave this at the defaults. You can go down a little bit and target poly count, but for a bust, the defaults are pretty rocking. You can geek out on it a little bit, but pretty much defaults is all I use for busts, and you just hit the Z Remesher button and just go for it. Now what this is doing is it's just doing auto retopology. That's the only thing that's happening here is it's just doing automatic retopology. And by Maya standards, it's quite a dense retopology, so you can see what that's spat out. And we've got it there. It's looking quite dense. But look over here, we've got this beautiful, nice mesh now, like a base mesh. And what you should consider this to be is a sculpt base mesh. So this isn't a base mesh in terms of we're going to go back into Maya and we're going to rig it up and we're going to get all excited like it's just done our job for us. I've found Zed Remesher to be really good for props and things like that, but it's not so great for like final character meshes. I end up just doing it all in quad draw. But for a base mesh and sculpting, it's absolutely ideal. So this is like super nice. So now when we come in here, now our smoothing tools are going to work way better because we're in a lighter mesh. And what we'll start to do is we'll start to use the levels. Now I want to go back to the other mesh here, but I just wanted to finish off and just show you. But by using a little bit of the move modes, and now that we've got these lines, you can actually see a little bit better. And this is where your sixth sense of a sculpting ability has to come in where, you know, people can make it look really quite easy. And when you're at home, you'll be like, ah, oh, looks so easy when other people do it. But it's just a matter of getting a feel for it. It's, it's just a lot of practice and getting a feel for getting those forms really nice and getting rid of the lumps and bumps and slowly building up those forms. So now that that's there, you can see that we've got a really quite a decent sculpt mesh quite quickly. Again, like I said, in a matter of minutes, we've got something pretty decent to sculpt on. So this is like quick base mesh. We're going to draw in the mouth and get the teeth in there and whatnot. But you could totally use this. And I, I just sort of stay in here. And this is where I think um, I watch a lot of ZBrush guys online and they're not familiar, especially the noob guys, not familiar with the old school polygon techniques. And if you're comfortable in these low resolutions and just willing to get that base mesh down, when you're adding the details and all that lovely, intricate overkill details that is so common in ZBrush, it really becomes very easy from here. So you want to be confident in staying in those low levels.